Hello and welcome to another Rightly Witterings with me, Michael Jex, the tea drinking author who's left his tea over there. I'm going to have to go and get it before I start recording. I had a busy time just recently, but before talking about that, I've got to just say thanks so much to everybody who sent me good wishes for getting over COVID. I'm fully over it now. Um, I've actually just received a little oxygen meter that you poke your finger into and it tells you if you've got enough oxygen and mine apparently is 99% which sounds pretty good to me hey ho, right, I was on the internet the other day and I discovered that Cult Pens had a wonderful offer on where they were giving three for two as a sort of back to school promotion I thought that sounds nice because I need a few things because my wife needed a new pair of compasses and she also needed some new um, pen loops, I think you call them. You stick the, it, they're loist to them, do them, and you stick them to the back of your notepad, and then there's a loop, and you can keep your pen in it. Very handy, seven pounds, very cheap. And I also needed a new Atoma binder notebook. Why? Because these things are so useful. I do a lot of home brewing. And my book on home brewing has collapsed. It was a paperback. I bought it in the 1970s and it's completely disintegrated along the spine. So now I've guillotined off all the pages and the covers. I've put them through an Atoma hole punch and now it fits the Atoma ring system. So this is going to be my plastic covered homebrew pad. And the nice thing was it was six pounds but it came up on my bill as being free of charge. So I, I wrote to Cult Pens and said, I think that must be a mistake because you've given me this for free. And they said, no, because it's three for two and the cheapest item you ordered is free. So it's free. I like that. But I also had to get a few other things to put the price up to a sensible level. And I've been using these things for donkey's ears. They are Rodeo notebooks and it's... This one is a model 16, which means it's this size, apparently. But, as you can tell, there's not much left. So I thought, a couple more of them. They're only about three quid each. One's lined, one's plain. I can use one for sketching, one just for writing on. And brilliant. And it got me thinking, because I've had a lot of other notebooks recently. <coughs> Those of you... Who who know me know that I love the William Hanna notebooks because the paper is just fantastic. It's gorgeous. It's about 115 or 120 GSM and it is wonderful to write on with all types of thing. But recently people have sent me, especially a very nice Drew in the States. Last year he sent me a Kukuyu sketchbook and this year he sent me some other things. I've got six notebooks here. Here are the first three I'm going to be talking about. Field Notes, Apica and Kokoyo. Kokuyo. I'm not too sure how to pronounce it, but anyway, these three, because they're all good. So let's have a look at them. So what have we got here? This is my William Hanna, as you can tell, because it says William Hanna. And it's just wonderful. This is my little daily in-my-pocket notebook. Beautiful leather on inside and suede on the sorry dark green leather on the outside and suede orangey suede on the inside it's beautiful and wonderful to write on wonderful to use but my everyday carry while I'm out and about is my little sketchbook because I can make sketches of the dog asleep in her bed I can make sketches of a local barn and as people will have noticed the other day when I'm at Swanwick on the writer's centre, um, there was a girl, there was a fancy dress night, and there was a girl who was absolutely perfect for a story I've been thinking of. So this goes with me pretty much everywhere. But these are the three I'm going to be looking at today, because these are alternative everyday carry things. I do carry my Midori Traveller's Notebook with me almost everywhere. But it's getting a little bit on the fat side. When I say a little bit on the fat side, it's not terrible. I've only got the two notebooks in here currently. One for general purpose notes, one for specific notes when I want to make speeches and the like. And it's got 
some glue dots and it's got a pencil and it's got a spare um, thread for when things go wrong. So it's, it's got a fair bit in there. But the thickness of the leather makes it quite fat. It's not a great problem. It is something that I do take with me almost every day. So these two really are my everyday carry when I'm out walking the dog. Might want to make a sketch. Might want to make a note about the book I'm writing on now. So why would I look at other notebooks? Well, because every now and again, when I'm going to a meeting or something, if I'm going to a club event with a writing group that I'm a member of, then I might not want to take something quite as large. This, for example, will fit very neatly in a suit pocket without changing the line of your suit. Same with this. So let's just have a look at these three in a bit more detail. First of all, I'm going to talk about this, which is a sketchbook from Kokuyo. I know someone's going to correct my pronunciation. I don't care. It'll do for me. Now, what do I like about this? First thing I really like is it's hardback. It's very slim still, but it is a good hardback. It has fantastic paper. Apparently, this was made originally for engineers to carry around with them. It's got 40 sheets inside, so about 80 sides. Each of the sheets on this has a 3mm grid, and that's because it was for engineers when they are out and about making notes on things. It is 6.6 .6 by 3.8 inches, so about 6.5 by 4, roughly-ish. Um, and it's 165 by 95 mils by my reckoning. But what I love about it is this paper is gorgeous. I don't know, but I think it might be a version of um, Tomo River. I don't know, don't hold me to that. It is a food a pen, or food pen, or however you want to pronounce it. And that means it puts down a lot of ink. So you can see it's bled through slightly on this Kikuyu paper. However, if I write with a more normal, and this is more normal, being a Schaefer medium, <clears throat> then there is no bleed through and really very little shadowing. This ink is the... Um, carbon black from... Oh, I've lost it. Where have I put it? Aha! Here we go. This is Platinum's Carbon Ink Black, which is pretty robust ink, let us say, putting it politely. This is Ackermann's Delft's Blau, I think, which doesn't bleed through or do anything. It it's a very well-mannered ink. This paper is suitable for fountain pens generally, I would say. Very nice paper. So that is the Kukuyu sketchbook. I like. I like a lot. This is the Field Notes version. Now this says it's got 48 pages made from durable materials. And what I find really fascinating about this is it also says 74,232 of 99,999. So it's individually printed. If you look up field notes, you'll see that this is their snowflake version, I think they called it. And what I really love about this is every single one, apparently, according to the internet, Every single one of the 99,999 has a different cover because each one is just slightly different in the version of the snowflake that it has. Isn't that lovely? Now it does give you lots of things so you can say who owns it and coordinates. I don't know why. Internal records possibly so you want to know when you started and finished. Um, contact details. But the thing that's nice is this paper is really just stunning. It's apparently, it says here, um, Finch paper, opaque smooth 60 hash T. Don't know what that means. Bright white. I assume it means, could it mean 60 GSM? It could be. 
actually feels a bit thicker than that to me. Um, and then the corners are rounded to a specific angle and all sorts of other stuff. How wonderful. It is, however, gorgeous to write on. Now, it's got 48 pages. <coughs> so it says on the back, I think. Or does it say on the front? It might say on the front. 48 pages. Uh, I assume that means there are... Whoops. Yes, I think it... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, 12. I, I reckon 48 sides. So if there's 12 sheets there, that means there's 24 there, so there's 48 sides. So that's fair enough. It is lovely paper to write on. I like the size because it's three and a half by five and a half inches roughly, which means about 90 by 140 millimeters. The paper is not as fountain pen friendly as I would like. Right, here, the Sabre Carbon... Sailor... No, not Sailor, Platinum Carbon Ink has come through, but so is the Ackerman. That's really quite rare. But, it is a wonderful little notebook to carry around. It's got a ruler. Well, pff, who cares? It's got lots of notes about what you can do with things and stuff. Again, who cares? It is, however, if you're going to carry a pencil, not a fountain pen, and you're going to go out and about, it's just a really practical, handy little thing to carry, isn't it? Very, very slim. It'll fit in any pocket with no problem at all. You can stick it in the back of your jeans, and it's brilliant. This one's a bit different. Apica. It is fatter than the other two, but that's not a bad thing. It means it's got more paper. It has lined paper, and the lined paper feels beautiful. Feels like almost um, it's got a silky coating. It just feels wonderful. It's rather like ro good quality Rodier or Clairefontaine paper. So, Apica was set up in 1916. Originally, it was called the Jap Japan Notebook Manufacturer. And then in 1973, it changed its name to Apica. This is the CD10MU apparently. And it's been this format, apparently, since 1987. I don't know what that 87 means. I'm going with Apica on the internet. It said it was created then, and then it changed its name in 73. Maybe they went bust and had to be reformed. I don't know. It's 4 and 1 8 by 5 and 13 16 which is a really odd size but 104 by 148 mil but this is the important thing it has as you can see here two sets of paper that are stitched so it's really quite firmly done glued together here where the two middle page sections meet each of these little, what do you call them, folios, there's 52 actual sheets of paper. And so there's 104 sides of paper to write on. So that compares with 48 and about 80, which makes this really fantastically useful. <coughs> I love the paper to write on. It feels glorious. It's just wonderful paper. It feels a good thickness. I'd say not more than 80 GSM, but look at that. Absolutely no bleed through from the carbon ink or from the Ackermann Zinc. It's just superb, and it feels lovely to write on. Now, just get rid of that excess ink on my blotter. Now, this is, of the three, without a doubt, 
the fattest. You can see there it's about double the thickness of the other two in terms of paper, although the Kukuyu sketchbook does feel that bit thicker because it's got a hard cover. But let's just look at these three side by side. Which do I like best and why? The pen I like the best is easily this one. It's light, it's about the same thickness on the, if I just run my hand along there, it's about the same thickness as the sketchbook but it has many more pages. Field Notes is half the thickness of either of them, but it has got only 48 pages. This, first off, I really think that looks lovely. I think that is an elegant, good look. Secondly, yes, it's got thin covers, but the notebook opens flat. It's really well constructed. It's stitched. The pages open completely flat and there's a lot of pages. The paper is wonderful, really good to write on. So although I don't normally go for something quite like this, this I find to be a really good quality alternative to carrying my Midori Traveller's Notebook around. One other thing I've just thought about, and that is relative dimensions of these. Because the field notes will fit in with my little sketchbook quite happily. Kukuyu is a bit taller, and so it doesn't quite fit so well. And then when I look at the Apica, look at that. The two will go in my pocket. That black is the... Uh, edge of the Apica, it's not the black notebook. But look at that, perfect size. They'll fit in the same pocket or wallet or whatever very happily. So yeah, interesting. It will get battered, it will get scrunched covers, but you know, that's the effect of carrying something with you every day. As to the second best, that's really difficult. Personally, I don't like squares on my paper. I'm much happier with a dot grid version or simple lines. But I have to say my second most favourite is this and it's because although I don't like the squared paper the notebook again opens absolutely flat. It's stitched I think. It certainly looks as though it is. I do like having hard covers they make it just that little bit easier. And that's the sort of thing I could carry in a suit pocket, pull it out and make notes, and people wouldn't think, that looks a bit manky. This is a different type of thing. This I think would do better out and about for daily use, certainly. So I think these two are comparable for daily use. This is more for, really, if I'm going to a meeting or something, I might take that more likely. But out of the three, which is my favourite, definitely the Apica. So that's a different little selection, isn't it? And let me just reiterate one thing. I wouldn't turn my nose up at any one of these. They're all very, very good, extremely practical, very portable, very useful little notebooks. This would come last purely because it doesn't seem to be happy with fountain pen ink. You do get just that bit of bleed through there. I don't know if you can see that in this light, but there is bleed through definitely with the carbon black and definitely with the Ackerman. So that's a bit disappointing, but I often only will have a pencil in my pocket when I'm out and about. I don't always carry a fountain pen. I do most of the time, but not always. I've usually got a, a Faber-Castell Perfect pencil as well as a fountain pen. So this is very practical from that point of view. But because I do prefer to use my fountain pens, if I'm going to a meeting and just want something light but elegant, 
this is definitely both of those things. It's really gorgeous paper, superb quality, takes fountain pen inks quite happily, and it looks nice, doesn't it? It, it has that sort of elegance, that style, which I like. But in terms of which is the most practical, which would I be using most often, this is going to get filled out first. This is convenient, it's a good size, opens flat, has a lot of paper, the paper is superb, it's the best of the three, definitely. And I think it looks classy with that cover. It's a bit like my way of choosing a bottle of wine. I've no idea what's a good bottle of wine, so the prettiest label wins my vote, usually. I'm like that. Right. Hope that was interesting. Thanks a lot for watching. If you've got any questions, put them in the bottom. And um, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell if you want to be notified. And go to the Patreon link at the bottom if you want to find out what I'm getting on with at the time. And also because that way you help support the channel. And apart from that, thanks a lot for watching. I'm going to go back to a cup of tea, edit this, and then I'm going to start making pizzas. Because I've got a brother coming to visit tonight and he enjoys pizzas. So we're going to cook pizzas out in the cold, in the yard. It is cold. But I don't care because I feel better now. I'm over COVID. Takes care, folks. Keep away from COVID. It's not a nice thing to have. And I'll speak to you soon. Take care. And now, put some pens away and go back to work.